Hello guys, Exus here, and welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, yeah, just want to get back into this, get started up straight away, get in, and I'll be doing a lot of fetch quests. You don't guys won't have to see them. I'll get them done and out of the way, and then I'll head uh, straight back into showing you some combat or storyline related stuff. We're going to get our Thaumatage up a little higher. We're going to get our Black Mage gear equipped, or as, like, stuff that looks like we're actually a mage and uh, i'll show you some other neat bits and pieces of the game uh from from early on stuff obviously i'm not playing a lot of it in my own free time so you're seeing basically what i'm doing as i'm doing it uh and hopefully you like the look of it maybe maybe join up if you've got a console to do so or a pc to do so because everyone needs a good mmo in their life once in a while and everyone needs something that's not warcraft once in a while so uh this should be it. Anyway, with that being said, I'm going to get in and I'll come back to you when something interesting is happening. Okay, guys, so it appears I was wrong. There is little fetch quests, at least immediately here for me to do, that I want to do right now. So we're going to go back straight to Kokobuki, uh, the guildmaster here of the uh, Thaumatages Guild. We're going to talk to him, see what he's got to say. Uh, guildmaster Kokobuki wishes you to draw, draw you further into the abyss of the Thaumatages secrets. Okay. It looks like some of the some of the options available will be the custom made rage, mages robes. That's good. Um, uh, your burgeoning burgeoning power strains against the confines of your untried mortal show. Another trial you must have. From this day forth, your tasks and challenges will be shaped by the teachings found within Thaumatagi. The Thaumatagi, the yawning abyss, a tome penned by the renowned Thaumatage Zozo Maya. My brothers who have not once tested the tested the bitter draft of defeat we instruct you on the vital lessons to be gleaned from the four extensive chapters that compromise the exemplary work much shall you learn about the threats with which a practitioner of our arts must contend the first chapter the threat of intimacy falls within coco bigo's purview it is only f it is only fitting that one so adverse to being approached should teach you the wisdom to be uncovered therein Okay, let's go see Kakabio. Here they are. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't like being snuck on. Ah, yes, Exus, I've been expecting you. Allow me to read you the permanent passage from the opening chapter of Zozomeo's Zoya, Guide. Ahem. The threat of intimacy. Ah, how magnificent the potent power we wield. Roaring flames, piercing eyes, and shocking box are matched not by fist, sword, or spear. But the burly warrior waxes fearsome with every closing step. Fish shatter bones, blades lie through flesh, spears punch your soft bellies. You know this threat, and stand you apart from such men. Ah, the last part makes me queasy no matter how often I recite it. The lesson, however, should be obvious. Keep your distance from your foes. Apart from the agony of being hit or stabbed or worse, you'll have a devil of time completing an incantation with enemies flailing his, with an enemy flailing his weapon at your person. Thus, the wise Thaumaturge always strikes from afar, the farther the better. Now, let's proceed with your next trial. Take this dried fish, set it down in the vicinity of the Silver Bazaar. Next, simply draw back to a comfortable distance and wait for the vulture to sweep in and to feed. That's when you ambush the nasty creature with a barrage of deadly spells. Once you have slain the scavenger, be sure to retrieve the generous slice of vulture meat for Fafafono. Yeah, that's the name. Uh, he doesn't mind us conducting trials so close to his shop, so as long as he's properly compensated. Yes, Exus. We pay him with sorcery, blasted fish. Sorry, bird flesh. Awesome. Awesome. Doesn't tell me about key items, which obviously is the uh, fish we got. Right, I'll cut out here because it's a bit... I did not mean to do that. However, what the hell is this little creep doing down here? You see this? You're practicing your creep moves. You weirdo. Um, yeah, right, I'll... Uh... I'll get off guys and I'll come back when I'm fighting the uh, so, so said vulture for the trial in a bit. Okay, so I brought you guys back in here because we're about to encounter a fate. People might be there, people might not, we'll see. Uh, it appears no one is. And that's fine. What it is is, for some reason, killing needles to slay, needles shed by other characters and number of basically kill as many of these level 3 characters as possible other people may well or may not well join depending see how hard these little bastards are and how many of these we need to slay to fill up the bar so they're not too too hard 
Looks like there's another person here as well doing the same. Ah, uh, so this is going to be fairly straightforward. So we'll, we'll deal with this. We'll deal with this first, guys. Yeah, this is like a public event. Uh, people uh, join in, kill as many as possible, and you will get a reward at the end of it. Oh no, he got rid of that one. So cool. Oh, well, there's uh, yeah, you're not penalised for not being able to kill in time or whatever. Just have to uh, help out as much as you can, so that's good. And they're all around the area, so that's good. Good. Obviously, I'm trying not to get too close or auto-target that guy. That'd be that'd be a mistake. Ah, oh, the fate's already completed. We got there. So I got 1,120 experience for that. Beautiful. And uh, tells you fate rewards. Oh, hello. A couple of guys here going at it. What happened here? This isn't part of a fate. There's a guy here anyway. I have no idea what happened there. Some sort of bandit. That helped that guy out anyway. Okay, moving on. Because we're not actually that far from where we're going to be. This is a place called Hamily. By the way, uh, <clears throat> Uldar's a little further up there. As you can see, there's the city of Uldar. So we'll come out a little way. I might as well carry on, on foot from here and uh, not worry about skipping back in. Yeah. Aptly named Hamily, probably because of all these giant working hammers in place. Uh, sun's about to go down, not really a problem. Ooh. Level 6 rusty kobolds, or coblin, sorry, over there. It's part of my hunt. Might, might grab some of these guys on the way back. They're not particularly aggressive, so I shouldn't have any trouble running past them. Uh, and we'll get to where we need to be, which is our challenge over here. I have missed loads of quests coming out here. But it's okay, I can go back and do them at our leisure. So the destination's over here. Lay some fish down, then we've got to kill this vulture that appears. Walk away. I don't know where I'm meant to be walking to. Oh, I'm meant to be standing here, sorry. There it is. Don't know why I cast a thunder, did not mean to do that. As you notice, it makes an area of effect mark on the ground when it's doing certain attacks. I can obviously uh, get out of the way of that. No need to though, it goes down quick and hard. So, that was nice and easy. Hand a slice of vulture, breast meat to Fafad Fono at this, in the Silver Bazaar, which is down this way. And on the way back, I might kill these goblins. Ooh, I've joined, uh, joined another fate. Didn't necessarily mean to walk into here. Are people taking on Earth Spirits? That is the question. Doesn't look like it. Don't, not particularly in the way of uh, their level 8s as well, which is a little bit too tough for me right now. Uh, so maybe not this very second. Yeah, you can join everything along the way. The experience is obviously quite good. As you can see, it increased my bar quite a bit at the bottom. A bank of 1,000 of experience. Usually I would take them up, but we've got stuff to do in this video, guys. So, Fafafono is over here. What a name. I mean, all these little people tend to have weird names. Um, you're done making use of my testing grounds, are you? Cough up the fee then. You're going. There's nothing like, nothing so tender as a bit of meat pummeled with wanton wizardry. Nice doing business with you, Thaumatage. Did you say Thaumatage? Has this mage just completed a guild trial? I have. Ah, Master Alchemist, what brings you to the bazaar this fine evening? 
This gentleman here just slew himself a plump vulture. You'd be surprised at how many of the scepter wielding sorcerers end up slicing to ribbon, end up sliced up to ribbons by that beak and talon. And that's not the sort of flesh I've taste, I have a taste for, you understand. My brothers, not again. Okay. Strange little uh, acorn looking motherfucker. <clears throat> Of course, I know that that was indeed. And there's another quest from Fafafono here that we're not going to take. Um, yeah. Right. Well, I'm going to head back to the to Udar and collect my reward. Push on the story a bit. I'll see you guys back there. Okay, so we're back here again, guys. And we're going to go hand in the, uh, the quest to Kokobuki. Oh, sorry. Kokobigo we go to. Not Kokobuki. <coughs> And in the quest, get our stuffs. Isn't he a friendly looking little guy? Uh, welcome back, Exus. You seem to have done well. Both eyes intact, face appears unshredded. It is truly a most terrible feeling to have one's casting interrupted by a heinous injury. It's one of the easier trials, if you ask me. Keep well away from the pointy, slashy, bashy things. If you want to reach the end of an arcane utterance, that's just common sense. Fortune favours the fighter who flings far from afar. I simply love the look of loathing level levelled at me by a distant duelist distressed by my deadly downpour. You have a severe rhyming issue, sir. Uh, we thaumatizers excel at offence, but fail miserably at defence. Our most effective strategy is, topple, is to topple our adversaries with overwhelming force before they have a chance to respond. Honour is for knights and dead mages. Correct, sir. Exus, your studies appear to be progressing nicely. It won't be long before you dominate the battlefield as an avatar of sorcerous destruction. And that's what pretty much what I was going for. Oh, here comes the peanut. So it's true, Buki. Don't try to hide from me, Bygo. Or you, Banny. Or Bezzy. Or Boa. Coco Boosie, what are you doing here? Dun, dun, dun. You promised. You promised you would teach me next. Well, yes, of course we did, Boosie, but Exus here was most insistent. That guy's face is bandaged up to fuck. Once again, you brush me aside in the hope that I will abandon my heart's desire. Why do you deny me? I hate you, all of you. Please, Boosie, you shouldn't say such hateful, hurtful things. You know how delicate Bygo is. Um, that was Coco Boosie, our youngest brother. He so dearly wishes to become a thaumatizer like the rest of us, but it simply isn't possible. The poor boy's etheric levels are pitifully low. We thought he had convinced him to accept his fate's cruel quirks when he uh, entered the Alchemist Guild, but he yet yearns to walk the path of thaumatizing. Such is Coco Boosie's determination that he spends all his waking moments experimenting with alchemical concoctions, seeking a method by which to, he can expand his capacity for arcane manipulation. Ahem, well, this is obviously not your concern. Back to the abyss with you, young Thaumatage, and I mean that in the most encouraging manner possible. Thank you. So that's what the little peanut guy was all about. He, uh, he wants to be a mage, hasn't got the skill for it. And we're taking a robe. Thanking you, and we'll have to level up while we're at it. Beautiful things, beautiful things. Now, something I didn't do last time, I should have been doing, is you should really equip all the gear you have when you get it. Because uh, that's the thing we do. So we're going to. Uh, we're going to equip the bone staff. Because we didn't just get one bit of that gear, by the way, guys. We got all of it. Uh, hemp and hat. Oh, please tell me I didn't. No, I did. Yeah. Uh, equip. Beautiful. So we're getting there. Getting there slowly. Have no trousers. Bit worrying. Uh, can't equip a shield if we have a two-handed staff. So that shield I could have equipped before. I'm not going to now. Ring of Fortitude. This was the item that was actually given to us by Brent, the traveling merchant at the beginning of the game. Didn't put that on either. Should have done. So, we are good. We are good to go. Or well, we're getting better, anyway. Getting a little bit better. 
Looking slightly more magey now, not how I'd like, a little bit too posh if I'm honest. A little bit too, too good, but uh, yeah, and the hat, not digging the hat in red, but hey, beggars can't be choosers. This is how we have to look for now, and as you can see, I'm bare-legged under there. We need to get ourselves some trousers, because it looks like I'm just wearing wearing some sort of dress or a nightie, or ready to, ready to just fucking hang out with my wang out. So, uh, I will make changes ASAP. First, we need to quickly go to the Gladiators Guild. Because we need to, uh, if we jump in the air, everyone underneath can see, uh, what we had for breakfast. Um, yeah, go to the Gladiators Guild, quickly hand in a quest there to get some gloves. That's the quest I took. Uh, you guys luckily didn't have to see me complete that. I was just killing some ladybirds, nothing, uh, ladybugs, sorry, nothing major. No, yeah, it's through here, that's why. This guy, walking. Back in one piece, I hear it's about bloody time. I admit it. You, you look as though you just picked up a sword yesterday, but you handle yourself well enough, I'll give you that. And here, I'll give you this as well. Ain't worth a night in Uldar's finest pillar house. But I'm sure you'll find use for it. All right, we need to pick some gloves, and I believe... Yeah, we have to pick the leather ones that look like mittens. Bitch mittens. We love ourselves a pair of bitch mittens. That is what we love. They, they literally look like bitch mittens. Look at that. Look at that. Looks like... I mean, we're in the hottest... One of the hottest deserty places in this world. And we're going outside wearing what looks like snow gloves. Okay, well, I'm going to find somewhere to get some fucking trousers from. I'll be back with you guys in a bit. Okay, guys, so I'm back. And, uh, yeah, i got some trousers on now. There's some nasty khaki green-coloured ones, but at least they're covering us. So what matters, they didn't come from a quest. I couldn't actually find one that I know you get a black set from somewhere that uh, give you maybe plus one intel, I don't know. But anyway, we're back here to deal with... Mistress Mamodi over here. So let's see what she's got to say. Uh, wants to introduce us to a certain someone at Uldar Dispatch Yard. Well, youngling, how are you finding our fine Uldar then? Got your bearings of, about you yet? Pretty much. Um, if so, it may have your time to venture beyond the city walls. I have already, but hey. Uh, the bustling streets of Uldar are one thing, but the world of Fenallon, uh that's another altogether. I know a bloke you might fancy speaking to, and he you. Name of Papa Shan. You'll find him over at the Uldar Dispatch Yard. No doubt you'll have, he'll have some work for you. The Dispatch Yard's over in Central Finale, and just head out the door across the hall. You'll see the Gate of Nold staring back at you. Pass through it and head east. You'll come upon it for long. The danger's beyond the wall, though. More than I'd care to count. Nothing too terrible, mind you, but feisty enough to attack you if you draw near. Don't... Don't say nobody cared enough to warn you. Okay, let's go meet Papa Sean. Once again, I will uh, cut out the middleman, cut out the boring journey for you guys, and uh, come back to you when I met him. And here we are, guys. So let's talk to uh, Papa Sean. Well, you certainly look the part of an adventure, my friend. Might you be the good soul my Modi advised me to expect, hmm? I'm Papa Shan, station master of this humble dispatch yard. An empty title, I assure you. I'm truly no more than a tired old Lalafell. La la That's what the little midgets are called in this, Lalafells. Uh, passing his final years in quiet and solitude. Twelve know that there have been plenty of both these last five years. Since the calamity struck, the devastation was vast. Yet now true Aldans work together, doing all of their power to rebuild what was laid to ruin. By the sweat of our brows and the love of our home, we have rebuilt Uldar to the grandeur and majesty you see to th that you see today. The railway, which runs through the dispatch yard too, were born of the noble efforts of many great souls. But there is still much work to be done. The wounds left by the calamity run deep. Isolated areas beyond our lines of supply remain, and there are places yet wanting, to rele wanting for relief and restoration. Uldar needs to aid you. Needs, sorry, Odan needs the aid of you and your brethren, friend. In fact, never has the need been more dire. Which brings me to the point, I suppose. I do believe I have may have some work for suited for one of your ability. Okay. 
So we got the uh, experience from that quest, got our achievement, storyteller number one, and let's see what Papa Shan has to say. Uh, okay, since you've come all this way, perhaps you can perform an errand for me. It just so happens that a number of sentries have been sent to guard the area. A dispatch to the dispatch yard, as it were. Uh, they have long been away from the shade and feather beds of the city. The hot days and cold nights can play hells. Hells on the mind and body out here. It isn't much, but go and give them these twilight pretzels, would you? I find comfort food always helps me when I feel like killing myself. Wow. Dark. Okay. Um, so, yeah, three icons have appeared. Let's go and feed these people. Well, I'm not going down in that hole because it looks like it's blocked off. So, up here. Twilight pretzels, you say. Sound delightful. Not a pretzel man myself, but hey. Oh, night's a bit murky. No stars and moon out tonight. Shame. The night sky with the stars and moon look awesome in this game. Um, so you're the first one. Sultan Sworn. I like that. Uh, Western front clear, eastern front clear. Have a pretzel, my good man. For me, from Papa Shana, toilet pretzel, my favourite. How did he know? Can't fight on an empty stomach. No, can I? Actually, you can't fight on a, any stomach. I suppose you could say I have no stomach for fighting. Oh. Then probably shouldn't be carrying that sword and shield or whatever. Moving on. So yeah, now you're getting to see a really boring fetch quest. Uh, it will lead on to greater things. So, And it's the storyline. So we've got to be here for the storyline, guys. It's not letting me sprint. There we go. Cooldown's a bitch on this one. Oh, minute. There's one of them up here. Ah, over there. Hello, you little LFL. Seville, Salt and Swan. Twelve save me. Scorching days, threes and nights. This post will be the end of me. Have a pretzel. I'll make everything better. Toilet pretzel. Don't mind if I do. Ah, now that's refreshing goddamn pretzel. I feel reborn. Canal, they must be good pretzels. Pretzels usually dry me out to shit. It's uh, a nice glowing treetop over there. Okay, and last person's over this direction. Ah, oh, I see him. Up on that ridge. Spineless base in this place is called. Hmm. Oh, and for anyone that uh, wonders why the camera movement following my character is so harsh, it's because, especially the up and down, it's because everything I'm doing is controlled by the keys on the keyboard. I'm not using the mouse at all. I don't particularly like using a mouse. I like my hands to stay over one controller method if possible. Uh, anyway, yeah, here, Mr. Sultan Sworn. Halt, oh, sir, I'm going to have to ask you to put the pretzel on the ground and place your hands above your head. No need, no need, my friend. I came to bring it for you. State your name and business, a twilight petrol from Papa Sean. By the gods, forgive me. You could say this new post has my nerves in a twist. Uh, I'm terribly sorry for that. Ahem, yes. Well, you may rest assured that this Sabbat child is safe as long as I stand watch. Please, give Papa Sean my thanks and tell him that if I only wish I could repay the favour. Okay, we've delivered all the pretzels. And this guy was up here. Papa Sean's just down there. So, might as well make our way back down. Woo-wee. Oh, I thought we'd take full damage from that. I know you do take full damage in this game, if I remember rightly. Anyway, talk to this Slalafel again, Papa Sean. You've returned, and with, with a deal fewer pretzels, I see. Tell me, how fair are Sultan's Wall sentries? Do they have anything to report? Anything at all? What? Nothing? Are you sure? Oh. Oh, dear. Take this for your troubles, then, and stay a moment. There is more I would ask of you. Cool, cool. So, very close to level 8 now. Exus, I have just this moment, no, no. The time for concealment is past. The truth is, even before I had delivered, had you delivered those pretzels, I was privy to some most unsettling news, which is the real reason that I sent you to meet those Sultan Sworn. Okay, what you got to tell me? A young noblewoman from a very prestigious family has run away from home and I have been ordered to see her safe return. 
The salt and sworn you met earlier are assisting with the search. Alas, it seems they have found no trace of her. I apologise for not being frank with you from the start, but we must proceed with caution. Should word of her disappearance spread, I fear others less honourable with less honourable motives may join the hunt. And should we allow her to come to any harm, not even a hundred beheadings would be punishment enough. Oh, shit. Uh, that cannot happen, Exus. It must not. I need you to help me find her. Yup. Praise the twelve, I knew I could count on you. How did you know we've only just met? Uh, I've instructed the others to expand the search, but Thanalan is vast and there are only so many of us. The young noble woman's name is Lady Lilira. I want you to go south and look for her in the vicinity of the Sultan Tree. The Sultan Tree? Sultan Tree. That's what we're going for. Good luck. As you insist, Papa Sean, I shall go and look for this Lady Lilira. Underneath the Sultan Tree. Sounds like it's going to be fun. So she should be directly over this way, or something. Yeah, we're not, we're not far. Something's over this way anyway. This is an area previously unexplored. All level four enemies, nothing too taxing. Oh, this is, this is the Sultan Tree. It's pretty massive. I thought that had any trees at all. And this is the other gate. This is the back gate of uh, Uldar. So this will be this will actually be eastern for now, and won't it? Gate of Thal. Oh no, to southern for Nalan, which I haven't been to. Ah, up here. There's a glowing sign. Hooded Lalafell. Oh, Sultan Tree. You are about to enter an incident of battle. Incident of battles only occur during certain quests and missions. Take a moment to read the information displayed here in that out window. So, special instances. If our level is above eight, which is just below, it will be capped to eight. So this is this is about the right level for what we're about to do. Okay, looks like we've got a major story quest going. So uh, let's get in. Oh, Sultan Tree, hallowed spirit of my line, forgive my weakness. My failings have cost us dear. Show yourself. <sighs> As you command, O oh Lilira. Forgive my selfish desire to assure your welfare. Don't be called requesting an escort. Simply pretend we never met and continue on your way. We both know I can do no such thing. It isn't safe for you here alone. It isn't safe for anyone. Not with this etheric disturbance. It's as though the dead are watching us. And I'd prefer not to join them. If it's all the same to you. Ah, you must be the one that Papa Sean mentioned. Congratulations on finding our elusive young charge. You'll have to forgive her impetuousness. What she lacks in discipline, she makes up for in stubbornness. You should return with us. The station master will be eager to thank Lady Lilira's protector in person. Alas, the station master will have to wait. Dear Lilira, for my sake, please stay out of harm's way. As for you, dear friend, for Lilira's sake, please stay in harm's way. 
Okay, looks like we're into a boss fight of sorts. He's not very good at smack talking this whitehead guy. Well, he's like, please stay in harm's way. So we'll smash this guy up. Hopefully we'll be able to do some decent damage with magic from a distance. Hopefully. I have no healing measures, so I could die here. I have no way to heal myself. Switch out my magic as and when I can, and then back to fire again. Just constantly replenishing the mana and then doing more damage. If I remember rightly, this guy does bring in adds, more trash mobs. Here they come from over the back there. I like how the game has decided that this guy is called Handsome Stranger. Right, so these ones are coming from me specifically, that's fine. Let's take them on. They will do a little bit of damage to me, there's not a lot I can do about that though. Just smash them up and then we'll uh, switch back to the big guy. That wasn't too grueling, I did take a little bit of damage. I'm sure we're going to see some more of those ads before the end. But he's uh, holding off the big guy, so that's not too much of an issue for me. Okay, switching back to Blizzard to get my mana back. And yep, there's some more ads coming in. Lesser Blanga. Get these beasties before I uh, get too badly hurt again. Oh, there's two more as well. Nasty, nasty. Get these ones here. Hopefully they won't mess me up too badly. Oh, I can take each one in one shot. That's handy. And then we'll go back to the main prize. Yeah, I think I've got this in the bag, guys. So we'll just take care of him. Oh, the handsome stranger managed to uh, cure me. And the enemy's down. Beautiful. Duty complete. It's what we like to see. Crystal Bearer. I am Hydaelyn, all made one. A light there once was that shone throughout this realm, yet it has since grown dim. And as it hath faltered, so hath darkness risen up in its stead.
presaging an end to life. For the sake of all, I beseech thee, deliver us from this fate. The power to banish the darkness dwelleth in the crystals of light. Journey forth and lay claim to them. Ah, coming around now. Would you mind telling me what that was? Hmm, if I only knew. A denizen of the Void, at any rate. The Void sent? Yeah, but how? The question isn't how, but who. We're not dealing with bookless bandits. Don't suppose the answer came to you in a dream? No sooner did you fell the beast than you fell asleep. Too much ether, no doubt. Interesting. I hadn't considered the crystal. But of course, this changes everything. Hmm? Oh, just thinking aloud. At any rate, we haven't a moment to spare. I must return and report this at once. I leave Lady Lilira in your capable hands. How dare you pass me about like a swaddled babe? I shall return and tell them myself. As you wish, your impetuousness. I suspect we shall meet again before long. Until then, do try and stay awake. Okay, so that was uh, all very interesting. We met a stranger, Lady Lilira, who uh, was interesting as well. We need to return to the Papa Shan now and find out what was going on. We also met the crystal goddess, Hydaelyn, that this world is named after. And she dubbed us, in her own words, one of her warriors of light. So that was interesting. We fell into a dreamlike coma state. And that was a fucking gigantic crystal as well. Very nice cutscene, very nice bit of uh, bit of dialogue there. It's kind of ex not explaining what's going on, but the story are in and around the story. So we have been chosen by the goddess of this world, Hydaelyn. Again, the same name as the actual world itself. Uh, 
in order to banish the darkness, so to speak. Anyway, what does Papa Sean have to say? Thank the gods you've returned. You had us all so worried. You do realise what would happen if a person of your noble stature were to be injured or worse. Why, her grace the Sultana would be beside herself with grief, and so would her subjects. I dare say they'd be weeping in the streets. But I've already given you cause to weep, Papa Sean, you and the people of Uldar. Please, you're, you're not to say such things. We will find it, I swear to you. It's not my place to make demands, my, my lady, but I beg you, please stay out of harm's way. I apologise for causing you undue worry, Papa Sean. I shall refrain from travelling unescorted in the future. Okay. I cannot thank you enough, Exus. I understand you fought bravely to protect Lady Lilira from a void scent, from f void scent fiends. So they're called the void scent. Uh, for your gallant service, you deserve all the riches in the royal vaults. Alas, a small token of my gratitude is the best I can offer. Hmm, a sarcastic man with a strange contraption strapped to his shoulder. Yeah, the white-headed guy. I see you met Thancred. So that was the guy's name, Thancred. He's a scholar who spends his days investigating oddities in the ether. Rather too fond of the sound of his own voice for my liking. But perfectly harmless. Yeah, he does love the sound of his own voice, obviously. As for you, Exus, you're just the sort of venture we need around here. I pray to show uh, you show some kindness to the people of Fenallin, as you did to us today. Of course. Thanking you. Quest complete. Beautiful. So we got some storyline bits. We got some voice acting. And we got a level up. So level eight. And we learned... What is that? We learned something. Roll action. Let's have a look. We learned Adol. Lowest target intelligence and mind by 10%. Level 8. We'll have that and we'll put that there. Beautiful. And why stop their spellcasting capabilities. Right. Well, uh, I've run out of time for this video, guys. So I'm going to have to leave it here. Uh, it's been good. We got some storyline stuff going on. We got some cutscenes with voice acting, although the woman's voice that plays Lily Ra, oh my god, that can grate on you like a bitch after a while. Uh, Thancred's voice wasn't so bad. Um, he does sound a little up himself, but I'm sure he's actually relatively down to earth and a good guy. Anyway, with that being said, this has been another episode of Final Fantasy XIV Online. I hope you guys enjoyed. I enjoyed playing, and I'll see you in the next video in a bit.